Hey everyone, today we're going to be checking out the EV based Tesla CCS adapter. It's essentially the same thing as the Tesla adapter, but it's significantly cheaper. Payment error detected. Charger cannot detect a vehicle's plugged in. And then after showing you the unboxing experience and talking a little bit more about the adapter, I'm going to show you and talk to you about my troubled experiences using the CCS chargers in the United States. The first thing you'll notice when you unbox this is just how hefty this thing is. It is well built and it is dense. Compared to the first party adapter that you can buy from Tesla for $250, this one costs under $200. Not only that, I actually have some discount codes for Black Friday that you can check out in the description down below. One of them is Dylan on the EV based website and the other is just an Amazon discount code. So last time I charged with the Electrify America network and this time I'm trying out EVgo. I'll say, I hope EVgo goes better than Electrify America. If you don't have a relatively recent Tesla, it's actually important that you go and check to make sure that you have CCS adapter support enabled in your Tesla. One thing that's already not going well with EVgo was I tried to set up a an account through the app and I'm just getting errors when I'm trying to sign up for the account. The Electrify America station also had kind of issues with the user experience in my opinion. So I'm just gonna see if I can do this without an app. To use the charging adapter, you just plug it into the CCS head from the cable itself, and then you're good to go. If you've only used Tesla superchargers before or Tesla cables before, you will definitely notice how unwieldy and just annoying this massive cable and charging head is. You can either auto charge, use the app, use a card or a credit card. I guess I will use a credit card because I couldn't get the app to work. I will try a different payment method. Okay, wait, just to point out some really bad user experience, here's my credit card. It's trying to go in here, but in order to fit in, if you have a metal card, <laughs> this is blocking it. I just put in my credit card and it's still showing me this touch to start. It's already, it is already plugged in and it clearly knows that it was plugged in because Previously, it showed me new information. Charger cannot detect a vehicle's plugged in. It did, though, a second before. Oh my goodness, finally. Okay, so I had to unplug and replug three times, and it finally connected to my vehicle. It kicked me out of the, the EVgo app because I had too many attempts on my phone number, but that's because of uh, EVgo side error, which is insane. And I'm currently waiting it now to connect to my vehicle. So this is very similar, uh, if not a little bit better than the experience that I had with Electrify America. All right, so now I didn't do any battery preconditioning because this isn't a supercharger, but as we can see here, we're already going up above 150 kilowatts, which is really good. So what this is showing right now is actually that this adapter is definitely able to go above 150 kilowatts. I don't know if we're gonna get above 200 kilowatts today, but we'll see. But to be honest, if you can be charging at, at this speed, it'll be really good for road trips. Like this is a really great speed for road trips. I did most of the charging that I've done on V2 Tesla superchargers, which do cap out at 150 kilowatts. You can already see though that my uh, kilowatts value is trending downward. So I think we probably capped out at that 185 kilowatt value, but still quite fast. I know that it gets said a lot, but the CCS just cable and cord and then plus the adapter, it's a very clunky system. So it just, it definitely is a two hand operation. There's just a lot of manipulating the cable and stuff to actually get it to fit. In the car, we can see that we have above 150 kilowatt charging speeds. Because this isn't a supercharger, uh, the Tesla doesn't automatically uh, precondition the battery for faster charging. So you will see slower charging rates if your battery is not preconditioned. And I'm sure that in the future, as they're opening up to more CCS chargers and things like that, there will be some sort of manual preconditioned battery setting that comes along and will eventually increase the charge rate at CCS stations. So as I alluded to, I had a very bad experience with the Electrify America network as well. I went one night, tried to charge. There were four stalls. Two of them are, were completely inoperable, so black screens. One of them said that it was gonna work. I plugged in, it kind of, the machine bricked. It just said, call this number and it was getting late and I was like, okay, whatever. I'm just gonna go home and charge it. Well, it wasn't too far from my house. And the other open stall had someone in it but they weren't actually charging. So it was just, 
It was a mess. Next day I come back, three cells have lights on, but one car is parked in the wrong spot. So it's charging from the wrong station. It's essentially just one car that's taking up two spots because they're blocking it. So they're, you just can't get to the open charger. So once again, there's only the one that has lights on. That one says, call this number. I call the number. It's super weird because it sounds like it's a robot. Like it, it sounds like a really good call center AI is what's talking to you. But I said, hey, this is the number of the station. This is the location. They do a reset from a remote reset. So the screen and everything just powers down and then I'm able to you know, interact with it again. So I put in my EV based charging adapter, I pay for it and then it actually works. And similar to this time, once it's working, it just charges as if it were like a V2 supercharger. By the time I went into the store and did like 15 minutes of shopping, my car was done charging and it was great. So checking back in, I'm at 65% after 18 minutes with a starting charge of 16%. So I'm up 49% in 18 minutes. That's not too bad. Right now you can see that the speed has tapered down significantly under half of what it was when we were at 16%. My two experiences with CCS fast chargers were the Electrify American network, which was terrible, and this EVgo network, which is still not very good. And it's crazy how bad these are, especially considering how good the Tesla supercharging network is. I have lots of issues with Tesla. I have lots of issues with this car, the build control. I'm on my ninth service appointment to fix things that came day one. Uh, from this car from like four or five months ago but the tesla supercharger network is incredible compared to any of these other public charging networks that i've tried the user experience of having these different app and payment platforms and some of them taking credit cards at the station some of them requiring the card to use and activate the station it, it's all a mess with the tesla supercharger network you just drive up to it you just plug it in and then you're done. You don't have to worry about anything else. But the adapter that I have does allow you to charge at all of these CCS stations. These stations will hopefully be better over time and there will be more of them because they right now work with pretty much every vehicle, electric vehicle uh, that's currently being manufactured in the United States. Having the adapter reduces your odds of being stranded. And I don't think I'm ever really in fear of being stranded but there are some times where i am you know kind of low on battery and i need to go out of my way to a supercharger and i just happen to be around a station where i see that there's ccs and those would be really convenient times and especially if you know if they work then i can just go and plug in if you do a lot of road trips i think it's worth it because it just it really does open you up to another huge number of potential charging stations. I wouldn't rely on them as my primary ways to do road trips, but it does offer a decent amount more flexibility as well as backup plans if you find yourself in a situation where you'd rather go and charge at a CCS charger. Tesla supercharger stations are sometimes just really expensive too. So compared to Electrify America or EVgo, sometimes we're seeing supercharger stations that are charging more than double of what you'd be getting it here. So also having that price flexibility is also a great thing. Tesla CCS adapter costs $250. This one costs under $200. I don't have a Tesla adapter with me, so I can't say how it feels, but I will say that this one from EV Base feels very solid. It's never been the issue when it comes to CCS charging, so it's worked. So if you wanna save $60, you could definitely get this charger adapter, it works. But one thing that I did notice actually when I was on that phone call with Electrify America, they asked me what adapter I was using. They said, was it the Tesla proprietary adapter or was it something else? And I said it was something else. And they said that they couldn't give specific customer service to non-Tesla charging equipment. So if I did have the official Tesla CCS adapter, they would have given me some amount more of customer service. I'm not really sure. I didn't get it because I have a third party adapter. I don't really see how that would actually impact me negatively. I don't think it requires a lot of customer service, but that is something to be known that companies out there like Electrify America know that there are third party adapters and they treat them slightly differently than first party Tesla official CCS adapters. All right, so it looks like we hit 32 minutes. Uh, this says 84%, but I'm sure the car says 85%. It's going to cost $36. Uh, wait, I want to see more information. Oh no. All right. Well, 
I guess you're welcome. The Tesla did automatically unlock the charge port, so I can just pull this out. Ooh. I remove the adapter, throw it back in the trunk, and then I just hang this back up. So overall, kind of pricey, but technically not quite as bad as some Tesla superchargers and a very mediocre experience with EVgo. Overall, I think the CCS adapter is a good idea for people who are doing road trips or just long distance drives where they might find themselves in a situation where the Tesla superchargers network isn't enough. And you could either buy the Tesla first party adapter, which is $250, or you could get this one, save yourself a little bit of money. So from what I can tell, it works. And these other fast charging networks, they just, they have a lot of work to do. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.